Uh, he's a little early here, in my opinion. P- tone it down. I wouldn't be taking these shots. Oh. You like what he's doing? Love it. Channeling his inner Rick Ross. I'm the boss. He out here like, I told y'all. <laughs> oh. this- and y'all wanted to doubt me? First of all, I'm, and I came here after I met Daniel Jones. I remember telling you, but you were, you know, everybody's caught up in the, the mob mentality of booing him. I wasn't booing him, but go ahead. No, you didn't me. boo him, yeah. but everybody was skeptical. And I'm like, wait a minute. Okay, I understand the Duke numbers. I understand the, the win-loss column. But can we look at the skill set? Tall, not huge, but bigger than Eli, and can move around that football field with an arm. From the same cloth as Peyton and Eli Manning in terms of tutelage, and now he's just going out there and just being the best passer in preseason. I understand it's preseason, but judge a man by the distance travel <laughs> from where y'all, not y'all, you, People booing him to now, the guy is showing up. Listen, only the, I, before you jump in, Doug or Mark, I, I, my position the whole time was, hey, quit acting like you're embarrassed you took him. Because Pat Shermer and them initially were making all kinds of excuses. And I was like, no, stand on your decision. And so now he want, now that Daniel Jones has done a few things in the preseason, he wants to pound his chest. He should have been pounding his chest on draft day. He was shook then, though, huh? Yes. <laughs> and so I, I don't. I don't like this because, one, it is just preseason. I'd pump the brakes a little bit. Mm. Yeah, I'll, I w- I'll tell you this. When Dave Gettleman came out, who was their general manager that drafted Daniel Jones, I hated that press conference. Yeah. I hated it for the kid because he was making excuses. Well, we had great intel that Washington was going to take him anyhow, so we yes. want to jump up and take him. And I'm like, pound your chest then and say, man, we evaluated this kid. This kid is the boss at quarterback. He is going to be oh. great. He's going to be great. Why, I mean, stand up for your pick. Don't, don't make the excuses of why you took him. I will say this about the critics, man. Critics, uh, being a critic is easy, right? Mm-hmm. Right, right. <laughs> Crit- yeah. Criticism is easy. Decisions are hard. They made a decision. He's playing really good right now. It is the preseason. But I think they brought all the uh, – I think they brought a ton of the criticism. Not all of it, but a ton of the criticism – on themselves because they didn't stand up from the beginning and say, this is our guy. We have targeted him from day one. The Browns, just look at it, just a year earlier, yeah. the Browns came up and shocked everybody when they went and got Baker Mayfield. But what did John Dorsey come out? So My great. guy, yeah. this guy's got onions. I, this is, he, <laughs> we were on him from day one. There's no way we trade down. Guess what? It's, a, it's the narrative that you create. I, I, I couldn't agree with you guys more. Right? This, is, this is a New York Giants front office narrative in, and PR issue more so than a Daniel Jones issue, right? I mean, look, last year they did well in the draft. I, I thought they should have taken Sam Darnold, right? Not just because he was the best quarterback prospect and still there and they needed a quarterback, but also because now the Jets have him in their same building and they would have forever ruined the Jets who probably would have drafted Josh Allen, who's not as, not as good, not as accurate. I, I, I don't just like the pick because he's played well. I like the pick because th- there's some logic to it, right? You got to be careful with this Eli thing. Last time they tried to bench Eli, mm. everybody got fired. Mm. Everybody. Oh, y'all. Okay? So now you get a guy who's from the Cutcliffe cloth. Yep. Now you get who can – so Cutcliffe can tell Eli, look, he's a great kid. He's got some room to go. He can talk to the kid and say, look, you got to walk slowly and quietly and learn from Eli. And when it's time, everybody will know that it's time. And so is it surprising how well he's played? Sure. But he's playing against the twos, the threes, and frankly, the fours. But he's played well. He's looked like a he's looked like a sixth pick of the first round. And I don't mind them sticking out their chest, but the problem is this Giants front office and this Giants coaching staff says silly stuff instead of saying what they think, thinking what they say, and just standing by. Well, there's a lack of consistency. And again, this is why I don't like it. If I'm Pat Shermer, I'm just telling you, his play is doing all the talking. Pat Shermer needs to add nothing to it. Just let the kid go out there and play, and it speaks for itself. But then Pat Shermer has seemingly reversed course. I've said it all along. Daniel, when it's time to play, he's going to be ready. We're going to continue to get him ready, and we have a couple of weeks left before we play Dallas. That sounds like he's opened the door for the kid potentially week one. Uh, Let me clarify, and let's bring this all together and consolidate. Pat Shermer is not David Gettleman. So this whole narrative, y'all, we can't judge him based on what they did. And if one is my boss, it runs downhill. So therefore, I didn't correct him. But now, what's happening is Daniel Jones has corrected everything in terms of this narrative in the preseason, which I understand Mm -hmm. 
You always tell me, Stink, what? It doesn't count. It doesn't count, but, but it does it matter. It matters, That's right? right? Mm-hmm. So you just can't roll out of bed and get in the preseason. I don't care who you're playing against and just ball, be the best passer, unless you got something there, right? right? Correct. So if I'm Pat Shermer, I do floss. I do flex. I do instill that confidence in him because why not? I'm not playing this guy more than likely this year. And MC Breed said it. Ain't no future in your fronting. Guess what? There's a future in him fronting right now for him because he's not going to go out there and have to deal with these bullets. Eli is the starter for this team. Eli will be the guy that has to go out there and deal with this. We're so going to continue up? to get him ready, and we have a couple of weeks left before we play Dallas. Right. He's not playing against Dallas. Are you kidding me? Here, one, they already went on record and said Eli's our starter week one. Get him ready. Get him ready so he can be prepared to be the backup. You think he's going to be the starter? Well, I was just – to me, he's that? left the door open slightly ajar. I, I don't, I don't, a guy the, pumping his chest like that? Yeah. The, I, again, the media – as soon as Eli throws three straight incompletions, the media's going to be saying, hey, Oh, yeah. Daniel Jones? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, 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 we know that. Look, but, but the owner – John Merrick came out and said we're going to redshirt him. Dave Gettleman came out and said we're going to redshirt him. Yep. And Pat Schirmer's come out and saying that that's the plan. I, 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 I do think – we. We're reading it, I think, and right. feeling it and listening to it. It's a little bit different. I, I, there's two types of backup, backup quarterbacks, either a guy who's got to be ready for that or a guy who's simply going to get the starter ready. And I think he's obviously a guy who's got to be ready in case that opportunity comes. Eli doesn't get hurt, and we're just waiting to see if Eli has a season yeah. like the way Peyton yeah. had. There's not a lot of independent thinkers in the NFL. <laughs> there's a lot of group think. Mm-hmm. And you know what's happened? Everybody's drafted these quarterbacks and said, hey, we're going to sit them, and then they all play them whether it's Bortles or whoever else it is, right? Bortles tore it up in the preseason, did he not? Right, yeah. but here's the deal. Here's the difference. Andy Reid had the wherewithal and the courage and the onions hmm. to sit Mahomes, even though Mahomes was ex- exceptionally talented. Now, he had a great quarterback in right. Alex Smith, a really good quarterback. He let him sit for the entirety of the year. And you know what now? Like I said, there's a lot of group think that goes on. All the other general managers are going, wow, look at that a great way to develop a quarterback right now all of a sudden everybody goes hey maybe we can do that so you've got drew Locke in denver you've got you know daniel jones here with eli and in the giants like there's a lot of teams and i've talked to general managers who think this way as far as developing their guys now as opposed to baptism by fire like it was for years yes but you have Goff and trubisky who had awful first years and look at how they bounced back so while you're right right and this i'm just saying i'm just saying because of what happened with mahomes now everybody thinks okay that's the way to do it and they're all going to jump on that bandwagon if they can if they're in that position Mm. thanks for watching subscribe here to get the latest from the show And be sure to check out more of the best clips from Speak For Yourself or go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.